Meet uh, Buster. Buster is here for rehab. Buster has what's called protective aggression, which is stimulated by sudden movements. Uh, for example, moving your hands a little bit too fast or suddenly standing up. He's actually behaving a lot better. Um, he obviously has a medical condition that explains his actual size, um, which is not an issue. He's on meds. He has to take them twice a day. Um, so yeah, so he's aggressive towards humans, but only out of protectiveness. He's obviously very weary of me being here right now. He's not taking his eyes off me. He's giving me what's called a whale eye, showing the white parts of inside of his eyes. It means go away from me. The distance increasing signal. Um, so, given the chance, Buster will bite to create distance to... He's very uncomfortable, obviously, around people. But he doesn't know. Um, as you can see, at the moment, you either try to put the thing... Or any sort of sudden movement is obviously going to cause him to... ...want to snap and create distance between us. Very important as well to understand that it's not about putting Buster in his place or dominating Buster in any way, shape or form, nor even about correcting him. We are trying to build trust. We are trying to build a different point of view for Buster other than him having that feel or the need to snap at people. So again, this is not about domination. It shouldn't be about domination. He's not a dominant dog. So the closer we get, the worse he feels, obviously. He feels a lot more uncomfortable. What we have over there in the corner is a lavender plant. Um, hoping to stimulate a sense of smell. Um, so far he's not interested in who I am because he's not trying to sniff it out. He's not trying to gather any information from me at all. His main objective right now is to get me as far as possible away from him. There we go, just started to use the nose as my, just picking up the scent of the plant, which is a good thing, that's the best way to introduce yourself to a dog like this, is through scent. Um, and making him feel very comfortable, it's obviously the, the game, the key here. Um, he's gone in for a bit of avoidance, which is okay, which is good, it's a natural thing for a dog to avoid. Um, and considering the fact that he's in a cage as well, um, will play a big part in him either snapping at me or trying to bite me because he can't completely move away from me. So the only thing he can do right now is just turn his head, but he can't fly, he can't walk away. So he's going to have to fight because the dog in this state will not submit. Uh, that's why it's not about dominance. A fearful dog, an anxious dog, will not submit. So there's no point in you trying to submit a dog or trying to be positive or trying to be dominant over a dog like this because it's um, you're doing the wrong thing. So it's more about gaining its trust. And once that's done, you can build from that and do a lot of different other things.
it's a going over the top of a dog of course it's seen as a dominant gesture so this is what I mean I'm not trying to be dominant with him which is what not what I'm doing right now I just want him to see this as a normal movement it's just a behavior that he doesn't have to fear or try to attack Buster has beaten people before and it's 90% of the time has been because of a sudden movement or somebody has made a mistake which is 90% of the time whenever you do get beaten by a dog you can put it down to the human making a mistake moving in too early, moving in too late, moving in the wrong way dogs always do something for a reason so it's very important to understand that the dogs are not bad then just touching Buster at the back here he's a little bit concerned he's giving a little bit of a growl the first few days of Buster's rehabilitation I won't be using a muzzle um, only to make it fair on the dog I uh, don't want him to feel trapped in any way, shape or form. I want him to be just who he is, the way he is. Um, be fair on him, so obviously this is what we do. And this is the living I have chosen. So it will be fair on him to be able to have a go at me. Not that I would want him to, but if it happens, it happens. Um, not a bad thing, it's not a bad dog. I just want him to trust me the way he is, give him every, single, every chance to be a dog, to create distance the way that he needs to, and then move in and move in, and just till he eventually just realises that I am not going to hurt him and that I can help him and I will help him. Just going to use some lavender oil. Hopefully the smell will help relax and engage his nose. And just give him a gentle massage on the back here. This is at the back, just up above their tail. That's where they carry a lot of stress. Obviously he wouldn't let me do this if this cage wasn't here. And most likely by now he would have tried to snap. There still is a chance that he will, of course. He doesn't know me. Who are you? If I can get him to relax today on his first day we would have accomplished a lot. He's outside of his comfort zone, he's away from his family. That's good, he's looking away from me. He does seem to have some sort of connection with our cameraman Mark. Um, seems to like him. And not to make any eye contact with him. So he doesn't feel threatened in any way, shape or form. His eyes have softened up a little bit. Which is a good thing. And this is definitely something that you do not want to do. Is put your hands in a cage. There's a dog like this, so I'm doing that because I do understand that there will be a certain amount of time before that head gets to where my hand is and I will have every chance to move my hand out of the way. But I wouldn't be doing this from the front on because he will definitely let me know that I'm too close.
basta meglio che due basta non ci dico è importante as well to understand I do not fear basta but I do respect him I respect who he is what he is and I respect every signal that he'll be giving me and then we're not there's no time time frame that what we're going to do with him um, chances like these where he's allowing me to pat him and touch him we'll take them with hands open with our arms open wide and as well my hat does go off to Buster's owners um, I've seen and I've known lots and lots and lots of people that have actually put their dog down for something like this um, the love these people have for their pet is obviously unmatched, unrivaled, it's no matter what the dog has done, they stick by the dog, no matter what, and that's what should happen, seek help, left, right and centre, so you get the right person to do the right job for him, and it's, yeah, it, it, it's really, I love it and I respect people like that, it's very good, it's just easier to either put the dog down or put him on, dump him out the pound, but it's a lot harder to do the right thing and get help for the dog and go through bite after bite after bite and never give it up on him. And while we're at it, it's a big thank you for your trust, for allowing Buster to stay here with us. I understand it would not have been an easy thing to do, which is, never is, of course, if it's your pet. You don't want to be leaving your pet with some stranger. But he couldn't be anywhere else. This is the best place for him, I believe it. I know it. And together we're all going to show what can be done. Alright, so for day one, I think we've done pretty good. We will let Buster rest for tonight. Um, I will keep doing this a few more times tonight. Just introduce myself as a saint, just a little bit of a massage, and we will go from there. He's got no collar, no lead on, so obviously we have to let him out of here to go to the toilet, to go and do his doggy business. So that will definitely be a good challenge. And it will be stressful on the dog, of course.